Welcome to the first lab experiment for EET 1150. Uh, normally, I would not be doing the measurements for you. Normally, you would have your electronics kits um, to be doing the measurements, but because of the COVID-19 uh, situation, our vendor has been delayed on shipping us the supplies, um, and which has delayed us shipping them out to you. I am hoping that you will receive your electronics kits um, before the end of the session. Um, you will be able to, to hopefully use them for some of the experiments in this course, um, or these will be used in future classes as well. All right, so let me quick give you a little tour here of some of the things that we have in our electronics kit. Some of the stuff you'll see here is not going to be stuff you'll be receiving. Um, I've had to move basically all of the lab equipment we use in both the electrical and computer engineering and EET program um, home uh, because I've been doing everything from home. So first let's focus on this oscilloscope here. You'll be receiving the Rigel oscilloscope. Uh, we won't be using this in the first couple labs, uh, but we will talk about it. To the left here you see that this is basically another oscilloscope. It's a Tektronics one. Um, basically, the difference between these two, you can kind of even just see it by the number of buttons and dials. Um, this is just fancier, has more inputs, and overall is just a better oscilloscope. However, this one will still um, give us the information on how um, to use an oscilloscope and also get us all the measurements we need. Uh, the nice thing is, is once you've learned how to use one oscilloscope, all oscilloscopes pretty much work the same way, regardless of who manufactured them. All right, now to the right here, um, I'll pan over here, you'll see two power supplies. Uh, the one on the bottom is just a really old power supply. That's actually mine. I just um, have it. It's actually from my college days. Um, my university was getting rid of some equipment, and I was able to just kind of walk away with that. Um, still works, so I, I still use it. But the one on the top is the one that you will be receiving. Um, and it has um, these 12 volt and 5 volt fixed output and then one variable output. And so we'll be using that later on in the course, or actually in this lab here. This breadboard is a little bit larger than the ones you've received. What you've received is probably, um, it doesn't have a nice metal backing on it but it's one two three of these you don't have this top little bar here or these little knobs here but you have three of these so if you want to you can just get a piece of metal and kind of um, these l are screwed on but yours actually you can peel and stick them on it fix them together if you want to have it be a nice bigger breadboard like this um, so that you have it um, but regardless of whether you use just a single one or all three of them it will be the same. Now the other thing here we have, that we'll use this pretty much all the time um, and some of you depending on what your profession is have already used these before. This is a digital multimeter. Um, these are used by electricians, they're used by EET, they're used by electrical engineers. Uh, they're just widely used. Um, they let you measure things like voltage, current, resistance, capacitance. Uh, this one will even let you measure temperature. Uh, so there's a lot of things that it can measure, and it can also measure, um, it says a non-contact voltage detector. Um, so it's actually able to detect, uh, for instance, um, power coming out of your outlet without actually having to um, put anything into your outlet, which is kind of an interesting little thing. The next uh, thing we have here is the actual electronics kit that you will be receiving that has all sorts of different components in it. And all of these components will be used in various courses. We're only going to use some of them this term here. In fact, what we're going to be doing for most of this session is just using this bin here. And yours might have a little divider in there. I kind of separated it out and just put all my resistors in here. Um, we're going to primarily be using these. Um, we'll use one of these chips here uh, later on for a lab. Uh, most of these chips you'll use in a digital electronics lab. Capacitors we'll use um, frequently, and then you'll have LEDs that you'll use. Some of the stuff we might not ever use, but uh, it was easier just to get you a, a kit that had all of the equipment in it so that we can play with it. 
It also comes with these little um, wires that are for breadboards. You also got a package of breadboard wires, but these little wires here are useful. I, I've used some of them, and I'll even hold them up right here. I use them to kind of make long wires for my power supplies here um, to hook my power supply up to my breadboard. All right. Now there is one other piece of component that I don't have sitting in front of me, so I'm not going to go rush and try and find it here, and that is uh, the audio generator. The audio generator here, I can show you what it's essentially taking place of for our course here, um, is I put up here on top of the power supply there. Yeah, as you can see, I'm in my nice little um, kind of spare bedroom as my office right now because uh, I'm working at home again because of COVID-19. Um, this oscilloscope here, uh, not oscilloscope, I'm sorry, this is a waveform generator. This can generate all sorts of different waveforms at different frequencies, and they're relatively expensive. Um, cheap models of these are usually like four or $500 um, for a cheap model of those. And so to keep costs down for us, what we did is we got what's called an audio generator, which will still generate sine waves and square waves for us, um, but and at different frequencies, but they'll be at fixed frequencies. The, uh, the arbitrary waveform generator, I can just set whatever frequency I want it to be. Um, whereas with the audio generator that we have, we can set it to different frequencies, but we're limited on what frequencies we can use. But again, that is fine. It will be fine for our course. Uh, one thing that I would encourage many of you to consider is we will be offering uh, this fall, provided the COVID-19 situation allows us to, we will be wa offering an immersion weekend um, in the fall where that immersion weekend will allow you to come onto campus um, and work pretty much all day Saturday and Sunday. Um, but you'll get to work with all of the equipment that's in our lab, like, again, the more advanced oscilloscope, and we'll do more laboratory assignments and really kind of get exposed to some of these other equipments in more detail. Um, and so I encourage you all to participate in that. Uh, it is not a requirement of the program, but you will th those will grant you a lot of good information and, and make your experience with this uh, program even better. So I encourage you as much as possible to attend those. All right, so now let us get into the actual lab assignment here. So I'm going to Alt-Tab back to a lab assignment here. So this is the first lab assignment. Um, and you know, they, a lot of theory on how to measure things here. Um, and also talking about how a breadboard works. And we'll kind of examine that here as we go through this. Um, and then what the goals are and some of the information here. And then also downloading cadence. Um, there is actually a different version of cadence that you can download. It takes more time to get access to it. So I would use the link that's provided here. That link that you download in this document is a 30-day free trial. But as a student, you actually can get access to a uh, full version of Cadence for free. Uh, you have to fill out a form and present your student ID, but it can take three to four weeks for that process to um, take full effect. And so that's why I encourage you to download the trial first, and then you can get the full version later. All right, so let's go back here. So let's go to the experimental procedure. So this is the circuit we're going to build. Now, first off, we have to find these resistors in our um, component kit. And this is where you need to use a color band chart, which I believe we've talked about in another video. Um, but the color band chart will tell me that to get a 470 ohm resistor, the colors would be yellow, violet, and then brown. And so I'm going to hold this up, maybe um, see if it actually focuses. Let me try and force it to focus on that resistor. There we go. So it's focused on that resistor, and it's still kind of hard to see, but that's yellow, violet, and brown. And so the one kilo ohm resistor that we also need, the color code for that would be um, brown, black, red. The 2.2 kilo ohm resistor would be red, red, red. And the 4.7 k ohm resistor would be yellow, violet, red. And so I have all four resistors um, pulled out from my kit. And then if we look at the instructions here, let me get to the right page here. 
Um, first thing it says here is like we're going to construct this. Now it says measure the voltage of the fixed 5 volt um, output. So that's the first thing we're going to do here. So I'm going to turn on my voltage supply here. And let's see here. Maybe I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to pause here. I think there's a switch that I don't have in the back here. Okay, recording again. The classic, I didn't actually have it plugged in was the reason it didn't turn on. So obviously that won't work. So I'm going to turn it on here. And you can see it says this got 12 volts and amps. That's um, this um, variable voltage here. This is a fixed 12 volt and fixed 5 volt. Now, we don't know for certain that's exactly 5 volts. And if you're trying to do measurements, um, you need to be precise with your measurements because often, um, even though a little fluctuation in voltage you typically doesn't matter, uh, it can matter quite a bit. So I'm going to put the wires in here and then show you what I did. It's kind of like the old stereo speakers on how you would put them. I just put in a red wire and a black wire just like I did uh, and I got those wires from the kit and then you'll see that I have stripped um, the other ends here. And now I'm going to turn my voltmeter here. I'm going to turn it to measuring and you want to make sure that it's measuring DC voltage. Uh, so it's the second one in. And then I'm going to set this up in the background here. So that we can see it maybe. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally take these two wires, my power supply is on, um, and you know some people are concerned like, oh, I shouldn't, you know, you know, put this across me. These voltages are low voltages, um, and we don't have to worry about the fact that my fingers are touching these here. So I'm literally just holding these in place here um, to measure the voltage. And we can see that the power supply is not 5 volts like um, it says. It's actually 5.07 volts, which again, not a big deal. But for precise measurements, if we're wanting accuracy, um, we should make sure to record that the voltage supply here is actually 5.07. All right, so that's the first thing we're supposed to do. Uh, the next thing we're supposed to do is actually measure all of the resistances of our resistors. And 